y'all. It's Thursday. I hope you guys have had a better week than I have and that everybody's staying safe and well. And I hope you guys heading into the weekend have a great weekend. Um, today I've got a little project for you guys. I've got quite a bit of stuff out here just for this one little jar, but I promise it's going to be cool. So with that, I'll kind of explain what we're doing here. We are going to decorate this jar that I got at Dollar Tree. I don't know if they still have these, but they will have something similar that you can decorate. It doesn't really matter what shape your jar is. I'm going to be using this one because this is what I have. And it's got the silver lid on it. And then I've got our charms. I've got some charms and another earring that, and these are left over from the video that I did last with the little um, gold seashell Christmas ornaments. And we're gonna be using these again today. We're gonna continue with our little beachy theme here. I have a drawer knob that I got at Hobby Lobby. They have these on sale like every other week, 50% off, and that's the best time to get them because they're quite expensive otherwise. Um, but I got one of these, and I've got some jewelry making tools here. I have a one teaspoon measuring tool. I have some washi tape, and I've got some E6000. I have a roll of wire ribbon. This is available at Hobby Lobby or Michaels. I think both of them have it. They might possibly have it in different colors too. I didn't look because I liked this one. And I have some jump rings in different sizes. Um, this was just a little kit that I got. And I'm not even sure. I think on here they say maybe what size they are. I don't know. I can't really tell because I can't see that. But um, anyways, we're going to be using some more of these jump rings. The same uh, sizes that we used that I used in my last video with the seashells. I'm going to be using my favorite bronze rub. If you've seen my other videos, you'll see me using this quite often on some of my projects. I have here also, let me move this out of the way. I've got some plaster of Paris. This is a great big thing. It's like $7 a Hobby Lobby, but I mean, this is, I mean, it's really full. You can do a lot of stuff with this, okay? All kinds of cool stuff, and we're going to do something with that today. I'm going to show you what we're going to do with it. Um, and I've got some twine. I have some water. I've got my Fabri-Tac in case I need that. That just got wet. <laughs> okay. And I have three colors of paint. I have white, green, and sky blue. And we're going to be mixing that up. I have my little paint dish here that I use. I have a trusty sponge applicator and I have a paintbrush that I'm primarily going to be using this for mixing things up because it's old and it's loose and that's pretty much all it's good for. Um, so anyways, I've got some paper towels on the side over here. I've already cleaned my jar as well as possible with some alcohol and here in just a second, we will get going. Let me just shift some of this stuff to the side. And we're going to be using these last, so I'm just going to kind of move that over. We're going to do this first. So let's move some of this stuff out of the way, and we'll just get started on our little project. And I'll show you why we're going to be doing that first. Okay, so I'm just going to take the lid off for this process. And we're going to be painting this jar, so this is why we're doing this first, because I don't want to scratch my paint with this wire so i'm just going to measure it first and get it ready we'll be getting this ready to put on our jar now i've got it cut here we're going to be joining it here so i want to overlap this a little bit so i'm going to cut it about i'm going to cut it right here because i think that's where we're going to need to be joining it so right here is where i'm going to be cutting And I'm just going to cut it. Oops, wrong one. <laughs> Get the cutters right. Get the cutters. Okay, so I'm just going to be cutting it right here. 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 this stuff is let me tell you 
and right there. Okay, and I think this is going to work good. So let's just make sure that we, yeah, that's going to be pretty much perfect. Okay, so we're going to set that aside for a moment, and that can go over here out of the way. And now, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to get out my bronze rub. Let's move that so that my sleeve doesn't snag on it because it's going to. And the first thing I'm going to do is, well, actually the first thing I'm going to do is take this screw out of our little knob. And this can be done with pliers. Now, I've already pre-loosened pre this. So it's going to come out really easy for me because I've already muscled it out of there, but this just screws in. These things just screw into these little knobs. This is on here. It's got a little washer and a little nut, but we're not going to use that. So we're going to set this aside. This can be used on something else maybe later. So we're just going to set that aside. All we're going to do is use this knob. This has some minor imperfections in it. I don't care. I think it's going to add to the shabby chic look of this project. So that is ready for us to use. And um, I'm going to get my gold rub now. And because this has a little bit of gold in it. So I'm just going to accent this lid. With the gold rub. And just make it a little bronzy. Hopefully, I don't know if this is going to work or not, but we'll find out. It's getting a little messy, but that's okay, because this is going to be shabby chic. I kind of like that. It makes it look old. And that's what I'm going for. I want this to look like an old, ratty, used up lid. And so... The fact that this is going on a little splotchy is perfect. It's wonderful. See how cool that is? That's going to look great. Okay. It's a great way to make something look weathered when it's not. Something metal like this. It's great for this. Okay, so yeah, that looks pretty cool. I'm gonna go around that little ring and see if I can get that a little rustic looking. I hope the light's not shining on this too much and that you guys can actually see. I can't really tell because I can't see my camera from here. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I've got that. And once that dries, I don't think that's going to come off. If it does, we'll seal it with something. Oh, my dog's going to bark, y'all. <laughs> Trixie, hush. If she sees a dog going by, she is just going to go nuts. Or a person. She's just warning me something is out there. So we'll just have to deal with the dog barking for a few minutes. Okay. Yeah, that's not going to come off. So very good. Now what we're going to do is we are going to glue this to our lid. Trixie, be quiet. Mom's making a video. She doesn't care. <laughs> she does not care, I promise you. Okay, so we're going to put that right in the middle. And it doesn't really matter if it gets done in that hole. In fact, that might actually help hold it on. So I am going to just liberally apply that. I don't want too much because, you know, it may just decide to ooze out from under there and look ugly. But I definitely want it to hold, so we're, you know, going to be a little generous with this. If it looks ugly, I can always put something around it to make it look less ugly. So we're going to go for this, and we're just going to put this down right here. In the middle. Okay. And that's going to want to slide around until it gets set. So we're just going to move that off to the side. Somewhere where it will not get disturbed. And then we are going to move on to our next step. Which is. Let me get a little water on my fingers so I can get that rub off of there. 
And now we are going to mix some paint. We're going to mix some paint. Okay, so first of all, boy, this thing has had its better days, hasn't it? It's got some stuff in the middle of it. I don't think it's going to matter. So we are going to be making some chalk paint. Our own chalk paint without buying it in a can, in an expensive little can from Hobby Lobby. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put out a glob of white paint. We're probably not going to need near that much for this jar, but you know what? Better safe than sorry, because I don't want to mix anymore. And I am going to go ahead and put a little dot of blue here, because I don't want it really, really super blue. I just wanted a little blue. We're going for like sea glass blue, okay, is what we're going to be going for here. And so probably even less green. And I'm just going to use my little brush. I should have moved that over a little bit. And I'm going to get my color first. I'll get the color the way I want it first. Let's move that a little bit further over and away from the blue. And actually, I think I'm going to put a little, drag a little bit more in here. Drag it over, drag it over. We're going to be putting some plaster of Paris in here in a minute. And that will lighten this up a little bit, but it's not going to lighten it up totally. So, you know, you don't want to get it too dark right off the bat. So I'm going to put in a little green and I'm just going to keep adding green until it's blue green the color that i want that is still too blue adding a little green it's starting to get more of that sea glass color that i like but it's not quite there yet so let's add a little more a little more we might wind up using most of that green it's getting prettier. Okay, I'm starting to like this now. So, we might as well just mix all of that in there. That's going to be pretty. Let's just go for it. Okay, y'all. Now we're going to need to, this is acrylic paint, so we're going to need to mix in some water, and I'm going to mix in, you know, you want to be, you basically want to have majority paint, and you want to have like, um, you're going to have like two-thirds paint, and one part, three part, okay, so let's see, parts, so we're thinking parts here. Three parts paint, one part water, no, that's wrong. Two parts paint, one part water, and one part plaster of Paris. So that's what kind of what I'm eyeballing here. So I'm going to add a little bit of water, maybe a little bit less than a teaspoon here. Yeah, let's do like a half teaspoon. Okay, I'm going to add in some water. And then I'm going to add in the same amount of plaster of Paris, about like that. Hopefully this works, y'all. Everything's here is an experiment. I'm used to mixing this up in much larger quantities. That's why I had to think about it. Because, <laughs> you know, I do this. This is what I do when I refinish furniture, except for I get the stuff at the store, you know. That's what I do. I get, uh, you know, house paint and mix it up, interior house paint and mix it up like this for my little projects. I think this might need just a little bit more water. I might have underestimated how much water I'm going to need for this. So let's just add a little bit more in there. Get this mixed up good.
Okay, now I'm going to take my sponge and we're going to paint this jar and we're just going to dab it. I did forget one step and what we're going to do here is we're going to add some washi tape at the top of this so that I don't get up there on my little um, threads. I'm going to hurry up and do this because I forgot. How did I forget this? I don't know. I get excited. I get ahead of myself. You know how it is when you're doing art projects. You just get excited sometimes. So here what we're going to do with this washi tape is we're just going to cover up the threads of our jar. Go around it like this. Push it in there good. And then just tear it off. I think washi tape a lot of times works better than masking tape so see now we're not gonna have to worry about our threads and now we can just go to town with this chalk paint our homemade chalk paint I'm just gonna kind of brush this on with this And go around that. I forgot to mention too, you're gonna need some sandpaper for this project. I forgot to get that out also. My little brain is just tired today after working and I didn't remember everything that I needed. So you're gonna need some fine grit sandpaper. You know what coarse? I mean you could use coarse. We might wind up needing coarse but right now I'm thinking that I'm just going to need some fine sandpaper. And we may need to do two coats of this, so I'm just gonna put on a first coat and see if I like it. But we may wind up doing another one. Part of spell, I don't know what that is. And it doesn't bother me a bit if this has a textured look to it because it's going to be shabby chic. So if it's got, like this brush is giving it texture, that is fine with me. It's going to look a little more like sandy, like it's been washed up on the seashore. And that is getting in line. Get that stuck down good. Good, did I? No, I did not. You want to stick your washi tape down better than I did, y'all. It's kind of hard to get this turned around without getting my fingers in it. I need to move my little pinky out of the way. I'll tell you that right now. It's in the way. This is looking pretty good to me. I'm probably going to have to touch up around here because I did not get that stuck down good. I want it to go up around the neck of the jar, but I don't want it to go up on my threads. So as long as my threads are covered, I'm good. I'm considering it good. It doesn't really matter because we're going to wrap something around that anyway. I just don't want it to stick to my lid when I put my lid on there. Okay, y'all, this is looking, as far as I can tell, this is looking pretty good. I'm just going to kind of, if I would stop sticking my hands in it, I'm going to just kind of give it a go around and see what I think. See how this covers so well? You know, it's because you put the plaster in it. It's because it's chalk paint. And it's just, you know, 
putting a nice coat on it. Okay, so I'm going to grab this by the washi tape and I'm going to set this down carefully. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm going to scoot it this way so that I can get this to set down for me. I'm going to move it to the edge here and then I'm going to move it up this way. Okay, and I'm going to let this dry and then if I need to touch up the top a little bit where I touched it, um, then I will do that here in just a little bit. But for now, I think this is looking pretty good. Even though we're just kind of flying by the seat of our pants today, it's looking all right. It's looking kind of awesome. It's got some texture to it. I like that vibe. So we're going to go ahead and call this good for now. And when this dries and when our lid gets dry with our little knob on it, I'm going to bring you guys back. Okay. Okay guys, welcome back. I decided we could do this step while our um, little jar is drying. Um, and through a little bit of trial and error, I have discovered that I made an error in judgment and I cut our little piece of wire too short for what we need to do to it. So I have basically cut almost twice as much, actually, as what I wound up cutting, about 21 inches really, because I'd rather have too much than not enough. And so I'm going to go ahead and set this aside. I'll be using that for something else. We can always use it for something else. And I've got out our little charms. I've got some tiny little um, uh, wait, jump rings. And I've gone ahead and I cut the post. This is the earring that I got from my friend Debbie at Kiki Sale. It had a post on the back of this little diamond. And I cut that off. And then I attached it to a new, a new jump ring, you know, kind of like a, a decent sized jump ring here, big enough for our jute to fit through. And I've attached that along with this little mermaid charm that I also got from my friend Debbie. Um, and so this is going to be a little dangle that we're going to use here in just a little bit. And then I've got these little charms here that also from my Debbie at Kiki sale. And I've got some little tiny jump rings that we're going to be putting on there because we're going to attach these to our wire. But before we do that, um, what I'm going to need to do is this is going to look kind of funny wrapped around our jar because it's so narrow. So we're going to like stretch it out a little bit. And then also our jar is curved. So we're going to need to accommodate that as well. And I'll show you how we're going to do that next. So what I'm going to do is just stretch this out really good, which shortens the ribbon. So, you know, that's, you just want to make sure you've got enough length to accommodate pulling this out, stretching it out. And it's already kind of wanting to curve around, so we're going to keep straightening it as we go. After we get this all stretched out, we'll straighten it out again. Um, and you can kind of tell that like when this wraps around, we're going to have some gaps up here. So I'm going to show you what we're going to do to alleviate that. But first we're going to attach our charms. Most of them. I'm not going to attach the dangly that I've got over there. We're going to suspend that from some jute in a little bit. Okay, so I've got this all stretched out pretty good. And I'm going to work from the center out because that way, if I've got too much, if this is too long, I can trim that down. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, let's see, I'm going to put this little blue shell kind of in the middle here. Actually, no, I'm going to do... So 
a little starfish. I think he's cute. So I'm going to put him kind of in the middle. So our middle is like right here. Pretty close. And I'm going to get my little jewelry tool. And I'll pick this up. And I'm just going to hook it around this wire. Hope y'all can see what I'm doing. I don't know if I'm close enough to the camera or not. I'm going to hook it around that wire. And then I'm just going to add our little charm. And then I'm going to close this jump ring. It might be easier, you know, if you used a little bit larger jump ring. But I don't want the jump rings to show that much. So I decided I was going to use these little ones. And I've managed to get that closed pretty good. And so there's one of our charms. That may or may not be exactly in the center. I don't know. And it's not really going to matter that much, honestly. Okay, now... I am going to put a clamshell up here. I've been working with this wire so my fingers are kind of dirty. Oh, I'm sorry. But that is what has happened. I'm going to widen that a little bit to facilitate getting this on here. Okay. And then I'm going to put our little clamshell on there. And then I'm just going to close this up. And tighten it down. Okay, there's charm number two. Put this on. Let's see. I'm kind of guesstimating where. I'm going to put this one down here. I don't care if they're all more towards the front and not so many in the back. That's not really going to bother me. So. Kind of hard to tell where to put these, you know, if you're picky about where they go, but I'm just not going to be that picky. I'm just going to kind of guesstimate where I want them to be. I'm going to attach my little shell right here. I'm just kind of staggering them on here is what I'm doing. Let's see if I can get him hooked on there. Yeah, I'm going to use back. Okay, a little jump ring and close that up. Okay, that's on there. I'm going to keep going with this and then I'm going to bring you back when I get all of the little charms on here, okay? I'll be back in a few. Okay, guys. I've got all of my little charms secured on here. So we're just going to set this stuff aside. And then I'm going to show you what we're going to do next. We are going to start about, let's see, right here on both sides. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do because if we, you know, like I was saying, if we put, if we wrap this around, we're going to have gaps up here. So we're going to close some of these. We're going to round this off a little bit is what we're going to do. So I'm going to start right here 
And I'm just going to twist this wire Crimp that off. And then I'm going to crimp it down. Just like that. Just to kind of close that gap a little bit. I'm not going to do the next one, but I'm going to do the one after that. So, hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm just twisting this wire. I'm crimping the end and then I'm folding it down. Okay. And the reason I'm not doing these is because I may need to adjust this some more and these are going to allow me to do that. So I'm doing every other one. I'm going to twist this wire. Crimp it off. And then close it, clamp it down. Skip this one. Twist the next one. Clamp that down, and it doesn't matter which way you make it go, just whatever is easier for that particular wire. Okay, and then we're going to skip this one. Oh, we already did this one. Okay, so we're going to skip. Let's see, we just did that one, so we're going to skip this one, and we're going to go to this one next. It doesn't matter which way you twist it, just twist it whatever is easier for you to do. Okay. I was wanting to kind of go that way, so I'm just going to clamp it down. Skip this one and do this one. Uh, yeah. I think towards me is a little easier. it and close it down okay now I'm going to do my bottom one like that so we're gonna start exactly the same see here's the one we did so we're gonna do this one now Twist that wire. And push it down. Go on to the next one. Skip this one, go on to the next one. Didn't get that one too good, did I? Yeah. I'll try to get it in the middle. I'm going to twist it now. I'm good. Skip this one, go on to the next one.
with this one. Go on to the next one. Doing it this way instead of cutting these wires and then twisting it eliminates um, sharp edges poking out. So don't cut them and then twist them. Just do, do it like I'm doing it and just pinch it, pinch it up, twist it, and then just kind of mash it down with your little pliers. Okay, now I'm going to skip this one. I'm going to go to this one. And then this is our last one for now. We might need to do more of these when we start trying to shape it around our bottle. Or we might not. We'll see. This is probably going to wind up being too long, but I would rather it be too long than too short because if it's too short, there's not much you can do. But if it's too long, you can always cut, cut some of this off. And we won't know until our bottle's dry and we get ready to put this on there. But um, I'm already starting to see it curve around pretty good. So I'm kind of thinking that We might need to do a couple of more of these, but we might not. Um, let's go ahead and do these center two and see where that gets us. I think it needs a little more curve to it. Just from eyeballing it. from giving it a little eyeball. Yeah, now it's really, now it's starting to look like I want it to. I think that did the trick. We're not going to need to do any more. I think this is going to do it. Yeah. We'll do some, we'll do it on the bottom too. Exactly like we're doing it up here. Whatever you do to the top, you're going to need to do to the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, that's much better. Okay, so we're going to go and get these two and twist them up. And then I think we'll be there, y'all, pretty well. If you can see what I'm doing good. My camera is not the best either, but... I muddle through. Okay. There we go. All right. Shaping up nice. Shaping up nice. I didn't get that one cut, tucked down good. See, I don't want that sticking up, so I'm going to kind of get it. I'm going to work with it and try to get it to tuck underneath. I think that'll be better than tucking up there. And we can always spread these out some more, too, if we need to, to fit it around our little container there. So, yeah, this is where we're at right now. I'm not going to do anything else to it until I see how this fits. So, for now, I'm going to let you guys rest for a little bit. We're going to take a break. I'm going to let that jar finish drying, and then we'll be back to do some more. But I'm really liking how this is turning out so far. I think this is going to be really cute, y'all. Okay, let's take us a little break. Okay, our jar is all dry, and I went ahead and put an extra coat on here because I just didn't feel like it was enough. Um, and so I dabbed a little bit of extra on here and that's all I'm going to do. And now I'm going to take this fine sandpaper and you can see where it's already starting to chip. And I'm just going to go over this just real gently. I'm just going to kind of give it an aged appearance and I'm going to go over the little grooves on this jar. That's what I'm going to do. And the idea is, yes, to rub off some of this paint that we just put on here. 
But believe me, this is going to be cool. When you get it all done, it's going to look neat. It's going to be awesome. A little bit across the bottom there. Okay. Looking pretty okay so far. I'm not going to do a whole lot to it. Just a little bit here and there. Mainly on these little creases that we have. Just to kind of give it, you know, an old weathered look. I'm going to set this down. I can get a little more leverage with it like that. And this is fine grit sandpaper. I think it's 500 grit. And that's all you're going to need. You're not going to need coarse grit. If you use coarse grit, you're going to rub off all of your paint. So don't do that. Just use the fine grit. And it will be great. I'm going to concentrate up here a little bit. Let's rub off a little bit up here in the middle. And on the sides here. Yeah, that looks great. You just put mild pressure. You don't need to put, you know, you don't need to just go all out with hard pressure. Moderate pressure is all you need. You don't want to take all your paint off. You just want to scuff it up a little bit. Like that, pretty much. I don't like that little spot in the middle, so I'm just going to kind of rub it and make some more spots. Here and there so that it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. That looks pretty good, y'all. And I'm going to go ahead and go around the top of our lid just to kind of smooth it down a little bit. I love how rustic this is looking. It's looking pretty good. I like it. Now, I'm going to set that aside, get this out of the way. I was trying not to make a big mess with it. And now we're just going to wipe it down. I don't want to seal this because I don't want it to be shiny. it off really good y'all okay that's cool I like it so much okay now which side do I want to be my front which side do I want to be the back I don't know they both look pretty cool I think I'm gonna have this side be the front this side's gonna be the front okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and see how this is going to fit on here and so I'm gonna wrap it around and it looks like it's gonna do pretty good it is too long so we are gonna need to trim it down and it looks like I'm gonna need to tighten up this wire here and this wire here a little bit and the bottom is gonna be okay so I'm gonna tighten up these two wires real quick just a hair and see what I mean? That way we can get a good fit on this. That's that's why we waited to do those. Because, you know, who knew if we needed to do that or not. And it doesn't need much. We're just going to tighten it a little bit. That's what we did earlier. Okay, and then this one. And earlier, I don't know if I mentioned this, but the wires that I'm bending, you see how, you see how these, there's one that's twisted and then there's one that's not, one that's twisted and then one that's not. Okay, so it's the one that's not that we're tightening up, not the twisted one, but the one that isn't, just the single wire. 
that's the one you want to get and twist. I didn't make that clear earlier and I apologize for that, but that's what, that's what I was doing. This is what you want to do. You just make sure you're starting on one of those uh, single wires and not a twisty one. The twisty ones are already pretty tight, so um, when you shape your wire, it's the single wires that are sticking up. So it's pretty apparent, but you know, I just want to be clear on my video what exactly we're doing. Okay, so I think that's going to work out great. Let's see what it does. Yeah. A little starfish is in the middle. This is going to be the perfect little cage for this little jar. I think that's going to be great. And it doesn't matter if our wire scratches our jar up a little bit more because that's just going to make it look even better. So that's why we waited till last to figure this part out. Now, what I need to do is get this kind of on here. And I'm going to shape it around. And I'm going to see exactly, or try to see exactly where I need to cut this in order to get this secured. And it looks like it's going to be here and here. So, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut it here. Okay. Get those out of the way so they're not poking us. And then here, see where this is? So we're going to go ahead and do, let's see. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that'll work. Okay. Do or die. So I'm going to cut here, and here, 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 and basically I'm just leaving my little twisty wires. Like so. So I don't want those sticking out. Because those will hurt somebody. Let's cut those little things off of there. I don't really need those pokey things. Okay, now. Yeah. I think that's going to work. We're going to kind of pull on this and stretch it a little bit. You know, I stretched it too much. So let's just, we're going to work it, work it until it goes on there just right. Let's see here. Yeah, and I've got room to twist my wires. So that's where you want it. That's pretty much what we want. Okay, now... Before I put that on there, I'm going to add my little, I decided I'm going to add these. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to thread them in here in between my little um, charms. See, I've got a charm here and a charm here. I'm going to thread this in here. That's what I'm going to do. So I've got a little, I wrap this into a little coil here. And so once this is on here, it's not going to come off. So I just kind of wrapped my little coil in there. And I'm going to crimp that edge. And I'm going to thread one or two of these little dudes in through here. Okay. 
and that's on there and it's not going anywhere and then I'm going to do the same thing over here except around I think I'm going to make this one kind of go I want it to go this direction or do I want it to go downward um, let's make it go down just for grins and giggles I'm going to tighten that one up a little bit I'm going to stick this through here Kind of coil that around. Attach it there. And I'm going to just poke my little wire thing in there. So, and I'm going to leave that sticking out because I think it's cute. We can always shape it. Okay, so, yeah. Alright, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to put this on. We're going to put that on here. Make sure your charms are on the outside of your mesh because if they get stuck under there, it's going to be harder for you to get them out. Okay, so there's our, there's our charms. And we're just going to... Take this, and I'm going to start at the top, and I'm going to work my way down. I'm going to take these wires, and I'm going to twist them. Let's overlap them a little bit. It's easier to get them twisted up if you overlap them slightly. Get it overlapped, and then I'm just going to twist it nice and tight. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing with my next set of wires here. I'm going to grab them and I'm going to twist them until they're tight. And then here's my next set of wires. I'm going to grab them and I'm going to twist them until they are tight. And same thing here. This is the back of our jar, y'all. I'm going to pull these tight and I'm going to twist them. So they're nice and tight. Okay, before we do any cutting, we're going to make sure everything's twisted together. It needs to be. Now we're going to check this for fit. And personally, I think that looks fantastic. I love it. It's great. Look at all our cute little charms hanging off of here, y'all. And our little our little beads that are poking out. And guys, we're not even done with this yet. Just wait and see what this looks like. Isn't this so cute? Okay, so now we don't want these poking out. We don't want this sharp little wire on here. So I'm going to cut that little wire off. Just that one that's poking out. I'm going to cut any little sharp piece of wire off of here because I don't want it poking anybody especially me not cool not cool
Okay, you don't want to cut them off too short because we want to be able to tuck them under. And that's what we're going to do now. We're going to just go ahead and take our little wires, benders, and we're going to just bend them under this way. Just like that where they're not sticking out. I'm just going to kind of make a little loopy. Just going to kind of loop it under. And tuck it under, just like that. Okay. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but I'm kind of looping it around. That one didn't go under, but I'm going to make it go under. I'm going to tuck it under because I don't want that edge. If I'm running my finger down, I don't want to catch it on a wire, so that's what we're doing. And it adds a cute little element to it anyway because we're rounding it off and making it look cute. This one may be too short to round, but I am going to do it anyway. Best that I can. I'm at least going to get that tucked under there because I don't want it poking anyone. I might have to put this this way for this here. Uh, trying not to hurt our little jar. There we go. I had to bend that to get that under there. Okay, so now our little our little cage is on there. Our little wires are all bent and tucked in. So, and that's cute. It looks like it's zipped up there or something. And so, yeah, look at this. Isn't that adorable? Okay, now what we're going to do next is we're going to take our twine. We're going to take a length of this and... I don't know where to, let's see, cut it out. I don't know how many times I want to wrap it around. So I'm just going to cut a length of it off. And I want to end up in the front. So, let's see. Yeah. How many inches is this? I cut 22, 23... See, that's 23, 33, about 36 inches, and I don't know if I'm going to use all of it, but I'm going to wrap this around here. Let me move some of this. I'm going to wrap this around in the front, and I want to end up in the front, y'all. So to me, when I say certain things don't matter, it's because we're just going to do this. Alright, so I wrapped it around. I wound up being about three times. And I'm going to secure this on here. I'm just going to tie a single knot. And I remember I've got another charm over here. And a jump ring on it. Somewhere. There it is. Here's my little jump ring. And I'm going to thread that through the bottom one here. I'm going to have to cut that because it frayed out a little bit. And that's okay, but I don't want it frayed when I'm trying to poke it through here. There we go. Okay. And we're just going to slide that on there. Actually, y'all, I think I want it over here because, look, see, I've got charms over here, but I've got a plain side here. So, I'm going to slip it on the other side. That's what I'm going to do. Because it needs something over there. And I'm going to make sure it gets it. So, let's do this. Let's try it this way. I still want it on the under, so let me tie my knot a little bit different. 
Let me do this. I'll go this way with my ender since I'm going to put it on that side. See what I mean? This is my over and this is my ender and I want my charm over here and I want it on the enders. So I moved that. And this is not cooperating very well. Let's see if that'll help. See if we can get this to go through here. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. There, see, now that's going to look better because it's, you know, it's right there. And I am going to, I'm going to tie a knot first, y'all, to secure that in place. Just like that. So cute, so cute. So I tied a knot to secure my charms in place. And now I'm just going to tie a little bow, just a cute little bow. Like that. Isn't that cute? That is so cute. Let's see, there's our little mermaid. Her little seashell. She's wanting to turn around backwards. So I may have to twist her around or something or redo that. But um, I like it. I think she'll stay. I think she'll get to where she'll stay. And so, yeah, isn't that cute? Look at that, y'all. That is so cute. But we're not done yet. Guess what we have left to do? Our lid. Our lid with our little, our cute little knob on it. So let's put that on here. Let's see how it goes. Now look at that. Okay, y'all. Our project is completed. Isn't that just the cutest little thing ever? I love how this turned out. The back's a little plain, but you know, nobody's going to see the back. And you can always hang some charms on it if you really want to. But I like, I like, just, I like it just the way it is. I do. There's my little starfish. Here's my little charms. Here's my little mermaid. She's really cute. And a sweet little bow. And, you know, this is so cute. This would be great for the living room, the bathroom. It would be a great Christmas present. So, you guys, make your own. Have fun with it. Do a different color. Do whatever you want. Put a sparkly knob on top instead of this one. You know, just make it your own little project, and I hope you try it, and I hope you have fun, and I really hope you guys have a blessed weekend. And I'm going to post pictures of this at the end, and I will see you guys next time, okay? Bye-bye-bye!